You know, we've talked about the media a lot on this program. It's, uh, it's ups, it's downs, it's sideways. It's <laughs> the media's uh, relationship to war, though, is something that uh, I don't think ever gets anywhere near enough coverage, particularly this uh, uh, aggregated, agopolistic, uh, semi-monopolistic corporate media that we have. Peter Hart is the activism director with Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, FAIR, FAIR and the co-producer of Counterspin, the website fair.org, and he just uh, authored a piece that's over on uh, Huffington Post. Uh, Peter, welcome to the program. It's my pleasure. Glad to have you with us. Actually, did you write this piece, or did Michael uh, Calderon? Uh, uh, at Huffington Post? Uh, that was Michael. That was but Michael. It was based on the piece that I wrote for yeah, Fair. Yeah, uh, based on the piece you wrote for Fair. So tell us, tell us the situation. What did you guys learn? Well, the interesting thing in watching the day of debate about going back to war in Iraq and, and dropping bombs in Syria, I'll probably put debate in quotes, was how little debate there was. Uh, one of the most interesting things that kind of went viral was when the former press secretary, John, uh, Jay Carney, and John McCain got into it on CNN on the night of Obama's speech to the nation, sort of laying out his strategy. And the thing that was so striking about it was that these are two guys that could get into a very heated-looking argument on television, but on in practical terms, what did they disagree about? Uh, they both supported war. McCain, unsurprisingly to, I'm sure, every single one of your listeners, wanted a more forceful, more aggressive form of war than Carney and the White House did. But that was, I think, indicative of the kind of debate that was happening across the media landscape, not whether or not we should go to war, not what war could do to people in those countries, not whether it could achieve the goals as set out by the White House, but whether or not we should we should have this much war or this much war. That was the debate. So we looked at a bunch of the, the main debate discussion shows, the Sunday shows, uh, a couple of the cable news shows, the PBS NewsHour, looking at who was invited to these debate segments or or one-on-one interviews to try to get a sense of who is being asked to weigh in on this and what kind of discussion are we really having. And you learned? Uh, Overwhelmingly, we heard from people who unsurprisingly supported the war. We found 205 guests on across these shows, 125 of them supported going to war. Six were opposed to the wars in Iraq or Syria. On the Sunday shows, which are kind of a good... um, indicator for what elite debate is thinking about a particular subject. 89 in favor of going to war, one lonely voice opposed to the wars in Iraq and Syria. Government officials were almost 40% of the guests. Journalists were over that. So you had this elite debate among people about the type of war that we should be waging, not whether or not we should go to war in the first place. Uh, And I think it it speaks volumes about where the two parties are on this, and of course where the media are. Well, there, there's plenty of anti-war voices, at least within the Democratic Party. I mean, virtually the entire progressive caucus, correct me if I'm wrong, the largest caucus in the House, uh, generally as opposed to war. Um, was this a, a self-selection process in the part of the media? I think that some of it, you know, when an administration has to roll out uh, a policy like this, you'll see, you know, their um, their spokespeople across the show. So you see Samantha Power, you know, doing one of those Sundays where she shows up on every program. Um, John Kerry was doing a similar kind of effort. So you're going to have a lot of pro-war sentiment. I think the problem with this discussion is that it got bogged down in kind of the details about when and how Congress should weigh in on uh, military authorization in Syria or Iraq. Uh, you had people on the right, people like Peter King, uh, the, the uh, congressman from New York, saying, you know, Obama has this authority anyway. We don't really need to weigh in. Um, so, you know, to the extent that there was criticism of the White House, it mostly came from the right, from people who said, this strategy makes no sense. It needs to be much more aggressive. We need to drop more bombs on these countries until the Islamic State gets the message. That was the voice of skepticism in this discussion that we were having. Uh, so it was a little bit different from the Iraq War, the run-up in 2002 and 2003, where everyone just sort of bought the administration's line. Except in for the few case, people who got thrown off the air. Bill Maher, exactly. you know, uh, uh, Phil Donahue. Yeah, and you, you saw these little pockets of, of skepticism, and those were quickly uh, shut down. In this case, we had 
the appearance of debate in the sense that you would sometimes have Democrats on who said the Obama strategy is, it makes sense, and then you had Republicans on saying, no, it needs to be much more aggressive. Uh, but that's not a debate over war. That's a debate over how much war. Right. Why do you think this is? I think there isn't a coherent anti-war voice in one of the major parties. Um, so, you know, to the extent that these shows reflect the debate that's happening between Democrats and Republicans, they perfectly captured the view, I think, of the elites in both parties. Uh, you would think a media system that lived through the debacle of the Iraq War would understand that a debate has to be much broader than that. You know, you mentioned the Progressive Caucus, and of course there are, there are members of the Progressive Caucus, but then you can go outside that. There are all kinds of people you could talk to about this. If you wanted to have a discussion, you could, God forbid, talk to anti-war activists about right. whether or not we should go to war. But that's an idea that just simply is, is not... Yeah. Or even some very, I mean, there's some very thoughtful people out there who, who have been in the middle of these kind of policy debates forever. Tom Hayden comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, who, who, I mean, he was a former state senator. He's, he's got credibility. Um, I, I don't see those voices. I don't know. And, you voices. know, Andrew, uh, Basevich, Basevich from Boston university, who does a lot of interviews and he was on the PBS news hour. This is somebody who's studied war. He's a former, uh, military official himself and said, you know, if the strategy doesn't make sense and the goals don't line up with what you uh, say you're going to do, then there's no reason that this to think this is going to work, and there's no reason to think that it's that it's wise. So you did have people, I think, who have a certain kind of credibility uh, in the eyes of the the military establishment, perhaps, who could speak forcefully about this. But uh, I think one thing that made this debate similar to the Iraq debate was the idea that the parties have generally uh, signed on in one form or an, uh, another. So you had people. Yeah, Democrats saying, you know, I, I support bombing Iraq, but maybe not Syria. Uh, you had Republicans saying we should do both. Uh, there wasn't a sense that elites were opposed on this. And once you have that dynamic at the top, it's very difficult for corporate media pr- to present any other kind of debate, even though the debate that should happen is, of course, much more nuanced and I think more substantive than that. But Do you think we'd we be having to- a different debate if we had a national draft? If we had a what? A draft. I suspect it would affect uh, the way some politicians spoke about it. You know, you have had a couple of politicians who have, people like Charlie Rangel have talked about this right. as a means to engineer a different kind of debate. Uh, and I think there's probably something to that. If not in the media, then in the public at large, if right. people felt like there was some what? skin in the game. Peter, we have a little less than a minute left. What can we do about this? To the extent that people can raise their voices about this and make it see, make uh, elites in the media or in politics understand that there is some opposition to these plans, then I think that's that's the first step. And the the second step is to seek out a media that's going to tell you a different kind of story than yeah. the Sunday shows. Well, that opposition was fairly aggressive when pre- the president was talking about going into Syria, and and it seems like it influenced him. Am I? Missing something? Oh, yeah. You know, a year ago. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the most unusual moments in, you know, foreign policy media discussions in the sense that opposition to the president's, any president, whether it's Obama or anyone else, opposition to the president's drive for war seemed to be very loud, very uh, very thoughtful, and very well represented but in the press. Yeah. And we saw that have a real effect. Yeah. There you go. Peter Hart. Uh, the Activism Director with Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, F-A-I-R, FAIR. Uh, FAIR.org is the uh, website. Also the co-producer of Counterspin. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.